In this video, I'm going to share with you my tips for shopping for plants, how to get the most value for your money, how to get more plants for the same price. So keep watching for my cheap plant shopping hacks. In previous videos, I've discussed going to Home Depot or other large garden centers in order to find um, leaves or cuttings that you can find on the ground to propagate at home. Uh, it's a controversial subject, as some of you uh, may know, but I also wanted to come on here and share um, different methods for going to places like Home Depot or any nursery or garden center and getting the best value for money. How to shop, what to look for to get more plants for the same amount of money, and then how to care for those plants when you get home. So here are some of my tips. I start my trips to my local garden center by browsing and seeing what plants are available. These can change weekly depending on the season and the stock available. Where I live, we have a lot of succulents, which are often sold in groups like these. Take a look and count how many succulent heads are available in each pot. These can all be separated into individual plants, so by choosing a pot with four or even five plants as opposed to three, you're getting a lot more plants for the same price. Similarly, plants like aloe and agave are known for shooting off pups or little baby plants. These pups can also be separated into individual plants, again, giving you more plants for the same price. Take a good look at all the different pots available and choose wisely. Don't be afraid to pick them up, poke them around, look under the leaves and really examine them. Here are some more agave and mangave showing off pups. And another group of agave, I think these are agave perii, one has a large amount of pups. These pups can easily be removed and repotted and will quickly grow to the same size as a mother plant. The same method applies whether you're in a large garden center or just the houseplant section of a grocery store. Even little plants will shoot off pups, which can be separated into more plants, like this Hawarthia. It's not just desert plants either. These colocasia plants are shooting off new pups from what is likely a lot of corms produced by the plant. When repotted, these pups and corms can be replanted to create more plants. Other houseplants, such as Sansevieria, also produce pups that can be removed and replanted. This pot in particular has two pups in addition to the mother plant, compared to the plant beside it, which is just one single plant. Even the ever popular fiddle leaf fig can have offshoots, like many ficus, so look for them when purchasing. It could either be left as is for a fuller looking plant or chopped and repropagated, which will not only produce a completely new plant, but will encourage new branch growth from the original tree. This pot in particular has three mature growths and even one small baby branch. It's not just plants either. Some stores will offer a deep discount for ripped bags of soil or rock. Just don't rip them yourself. My favorite spot though is the clearance section. I have found some amazing deals here, especially if you have the time and inclination for a plant rescue. Today's deal are these $1 gallon pots of succulents. So these were my really big deal of the day plants. I got um, a bunch of succulents in the clearance section for $1. Campfire plant. These are Echeveria Allegra. Look, normal price, $10 got it for one but not only that even if they were ten dollars it'd be pretty good because you're getting one two three four plants in that one and this one even more from what I can see there's at least one two three four five six plants in this so even if you're paying full price right you got six plants that's a dollar sixty for each of these plants but then for me at the clearance rate I'm basically getting those for 16 cents each. And I mean, okay, technically it's not a free plant, but it's as close to free as you can get. So what do we do with these plants? How do we break them apart into multiple plants? I mean, obviously I can just pull these out of the pot and plant them as is with one big um, plant here. But I wanna take advantage of all of these plants. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do to take these apart. Okay, so here is the plant as I've pulled it out. The first thing you're gonna do is just kinda gently massage the soil away. I can see there's some like kinda nice healthy roots in there and 
even though succulents do not require roots for planting, um, I am planning on putting these in a very sunny spot in the garden. So I, I think having the roots there will make them a little bit more hardy. And as you see, as I'm going through this, there's a lot of leaf detritus I'm gonna get rid of. So I'm really just carefully pulling these apart. As you massage it, you'll start to notice where the kind of little pups are coming out. The reason this plant has so many plants on it is it's kind of doing its succulent thing. And as we get in here, we can have a little bit of a better look. As the soil and the dead leaves are taken out, you can start to see um, how this plant is put together, how it's grown. There's even like some little tiny new pups even coming out, very new ones. So I'm just gonna gently massage it and start kind of taking them apart from each other. There is one big mama plant that they all came from. Um, and they're the all pups of that plant. I may need to go in and actually use clippers to take it apart. I don't know if you can see that. You can start to see where all the, there we go, look. And that has just come off. So we've got a nice big succulent floret. Because it was so tightly in there, it got a little bit squashed and misshapen. Now that we've separated this, this'll start to get a really nice shape. Let's see if we can do it with the rest. So that one, this one was a pup. So I did kind of break it off a little bit. You can see where it was attached, but it's got its own roots. So it'll be just fine. And now I wanna be real careful cause there is a little tiny, tiny baby pup in there. I want it to Oh, I squished it. It happens. That was a pup. It's okay. I got plenty of plants from this. And it will grow, it just goes to show, it will grow more plants. So I just took those apart and these two. So I will show you exactly what we ended up with from this one $1 plant. Okay, so here's what we ended up with from that one pot. Here's the mama plant. So we ended up with one, two, three, four, five echeverias. So not six as I had originally thought, but still, I mean, 20 cents for this plant is a lot cheaper than even buying the little mini pots um, at places like Home Depot. You usually see those for about $3. So we're doing pretty well here. So each of these can be planted individually. So I did manage to keep all of these with roots. However, with succulents like this or aloe or agave pups, which are also really common when you are buying plants um, with pups, you can very simply use clippers, clip those, and these will regrow their own roots. Like if you can't take apart something with roots, don't sweat it. These will grow as cuttings. One nice advantage of growing things from cuttings as well, if uh, sometimes this is useful, is you can see this is pretty big. If you're gonna grow something from a cutting, it's gonna use a lot of its energy to regrow new roots and repropagate, and it will take a little bit longer for it to grow too big or to flower, um, which is a good thing sometimes. You don't want these to get overgrown. In other cases, uh, sometimes you do want them to grow bigger. So I am looking forward to, so you probably hear the water. I am planning on planting these up into that new section of my garden. So interestingly, this is the other Echeveria that came from that clearance section. I thought it had four plants. One, two, three, four. It looks like it's got five. And in under here, six, seven, eight so this one it looked like it had less plants it's actually got eight plants in here so that is eight plants for one dollar 
And I figure this might be also a good demonstration on how you can just quite simply cut these to get another plant out of this. I'm just gonna let this callus off, remove a lot of the lower leaves, and then you can just pop it into a pot or into the ground and it will regrow. And in some cases, uh, using this cutting method is preferred because as you can see, this obviously has one big mother plant and these were all pups coming out. I don't think they're going to detach the same way these did. So the best way to remove them is with the clippers like that. So in the end, with the second plant, we ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a ton of little tiny pups. I'm not gonna detach them just yet because they are so small, but a ton more plants. All right, so I have all these lovely little echeverias. I wanna plant around it. Just, I think it'll look so pretty. I'm gonna add some nice loamy soil and stick them in like that. The soil all around so they're nice and snug in there. Here they are all planted up and separated. I have five plants here all together. This is a great example to show you that buying these as a group, whether a clearance or not, is much better value than buying them individually. I hope this has been helpful for your plant shopping journey. And I always love to hear your shopping tips and tricks and just love having conversations with you all. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to check out my other social media channels on Instagram and TikTok. And of course, subscribe and ring the bell.